Pokemon collectors. Yeah, I know that's a weird word. Collector and investor. I think that you should be a collector first, and I'm going to break down. We're going to talk about collecting and investing. This might be a little bit longer of a rant, but some of this information is going to be new to you guys, and some of it will be uh, same stuff that other people are saying, but maybe just from my perspective. So I'm going to try and take everything from my outlook on uh, Pokemon, sealed, collecting, investing, all of that, all wrapped into one, kind of what's touching on some of the market stuff. But first off, the question that I would ask you guys is why do you invest? And I would ask you guys to leave a comment below of why you invest. I'm going to dive deeper into that right now. Okay. So let me know in the comments. Do you guys invest in Pokemon? Oh, and also what do you invest in? Because there's, there's some differences there. We're going to jump into it all. Do you guys invest solely into Pokemon just for making money? Because if so, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, as an example, I would classify myself as a collector first. I'm very passionate about all of, all of the cards. I love, I, 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 and I'm becoming more passionate about sealed product as a collection, not just an investment, because I do think that it is nice. In this display case over here, uh, I have, you know, a lot of my sealed booster boxes that uh, I like seeing. Uh, so, some of them I plan on just keeping and not selling just to have as display pieces because they do make me happy. And that's something that I've appreciated over time. It, it's kind of more of a like a learned um, aspect that I did not expect. But I would also classify like, so when, when do you become an investor? Like when, when do you take yourself from a collector to an investor? For me... I would say that I became an investor when I finally realized that I was wasting money ripping boxes and packs. And it took me a really long time to get to that point. And you don't, you, everyone has a different journey. You don't have to come to the same realization at the same time. And maybe you never will. If you have a weakness though, uh, if you cannot control yourself and I know some people, I got a really close friend who he's ripping boxes no matter what, packs, boxes, which is fine. Sealed investing is just not for him. He can't control it, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is important to know, right? So I, I got I got sick of losing money on, uh, uh, you know, ripping ripping packs because it's really fun to chase, chase these cards. And I'm not going to lie, the best feeling is pulling the chase card. And then on top of that, not only pulling the chase card, but if you can get a clean copy and then you grade that in a 10, be like, I pulled that and graded that myself. Not really, you know, too much of a better feeling uh, in as far as collecting goes. Also, what one th topic that I want to talk about that's everybody suffers from this is FOMO, right? If you want to be, for the most part, a smart both collector and investor, you're going to want to not FOMO buy. And sometimes, like, I'm guilty of FOMO buying, okay? I've done it, and I'll continue to do it. <laughs> but if you are at least, you have this mindset of, and I'll give you a specific example with the current set. So I have a few boxes of Paldea Evolved, which is great, and I'm holding on to those. And I got those sub, like, 90 bucks. Like, yeah, around 90-ish, I think. But my example with that is it's okay to miss out. You cannot make every play for the common person, right? I don't have unlimited funds, but I am I am investing so I can grow my collection, right? So I'm trying to be smart about it because I want to buy the singles that I want. So with Paldea, if it gets a reprint, I'm going to get more, right? I'm avoiding the Magikarp because if it gets a reprint, which is likely, the print quality on the Magikarp could be better. And I'm not going to chase a $600, $700, you know, PSA 10 on a Magikarp. You guys are welcome to do that. And I'm not going to judge you for that. And you could be right. But if they don't reprint it, I'm okay. Like, I, you don't have to be in on every play. I'm out. Like, that's fine. You don't, you're not going to hit every box. Okay, and sometimes, you know, you might miss out on Evolving Skies. 
that's okay. It's not the only play, right? So once you can mentally get to that point where you're okay with not making every play, then you're going to do a lot better. Make the plays that you know are smart and don't always chase. However, it can be said that when boxes are about to get to this point, you know, like when they sell it in the Pokemon Center and everyone's FOMO buying in the price, like there is, you can buy at the MSRP, you know, like, so for example, I got a lot of my uh, Lost Origins at MSRP and then the price shot up. And so like, I kind of rode the Pokemon Center thing would have been smarter to get it before. Right. But financially, I didn't have the cash at the time. So, you know, things happen, but just keep that in mind. Also, something that should be talked about more that a lot of time like people feel bad about is there's nothing wrong with taking profits if you bought a card or a box or whatever with the intention of selling or you need the money if you're there's nothing wrong with taking profits like selling into strength okay so like these alt arts like nobody can predict the tip tops even if there's like room to run potentially if you're worried and you got in at a good entry point Don't let anybody make you feel bad for taking profits, okay? Nobody, few people, not nobody, but few people ever time the market at, you know, the exact bottom and the actual peak, right? So if you're in a good spot with whatever, graded card sealed, and, you know, you need cash or you want to flip into something else or whatever you want, don't don't let anybody make you feel bad for that. All right, next up, this is a uh, this is a thing that people talk about a lot, but dollar cost average can be very important, and I talked about this a lot with the Japanese booster boxes, but it can be said for if you're able to get boxes in like the 80 to 90 range all the way up, if you're worried about your price point and you don't want to be over leveraged, you can always dollar cost average if you're getting if you're getting boxes all along the way then you will be much better set up. So even if you get burnt on a few high buys, but you have lower buys, it's going to even out and you're going to do really well. This is kind of a pretty common stock thing, but not. there's a lot of channels that talk about it, but not a lot. I don't think it's talked about enough. You can dollar cost average with boxes. I think it's a smart way to approach things, especially it's served me well with the Japanese 151 thing because it's been kind of a little craze and now it's coming back down again. So... um, yeah, dollar cost average is a good way to go. Um, then the next thing up is sealed versus singles. So both for collecting and investing, what do you what do you prefer? So for me, my my uh, long term is sealed. Will always kind of be a lot more steady. It will outperform. I mean, it's fairly proven with modern Pokemon. Sealed boxes are the way to go with booster boxes. I dabble with the singles because there's more upside. There can be higher swings, as you guys have seen. We've seen massive gains on singles. And I like grading, buying raw, grading, and then flipping. And I've had some luck with some Crown Zenith. Like Crown Zenith is kind of popping right now. And I've had some luck. I bought, sometimes I buy already in a 10, but it more often than not, I try to grade because there's the most upside. So if you're if you're buying like sets, uh, you know, like Scarlet and Violet, if you're especially getting ahead of the wave, you can buy singles, not grade them, and just keep them. And then once you see those price spikes, then you can grade, right? So that's that's also another play. But I like sealed for long term, singles for shorter term. But it can depend. Excuse me. It really can depend on what what you're wanting out of it, because not everybody. Not everybody also has the patience to wait years to sell boxes. So singles are, are better for more like quick uh, quick flips. Also, uh, let's see, next here. I would ask you guys, why do you collect what you collect? Are you collecting master sets? Me personally, I don't have any master sets. There's a, quite a few that I want that I want to work on. Right. And I would love and I will have some master sets in the future, but currently I don't there. There's uh, I find myself fixated with too many different options. Right. So and there's nothing wrong with that.
But do you collect master sets? Do you collect, do you focus only on the alternate arts, which are real popular right now? Are you into vintage? Because me, I was like eight years old in 99 when the, when the craze happened. So my heart is with vintage, right? What about, are you collecting modern? Are you collecting only PSA 10s? Why do you collect what you collect? There's nothing wrong with collecting how you want to collect, right? But I will say this, and this is, you can take this how you want. I feel like it's, it, it is fairly true, right? Collecting grade, graded cards is the dumbest thing you can do, but I do it, all right? I, I'm guilty. Collecting graded cards, especially PSA 10s, like high grades. It would make more sense, honestly, if you collected nines, eights, whatever, but people, it's human nature to chase the high, high value, high dollar, but from a collecting only standpoint, and I got, I got PSA 10s all up in this right here, like tens everywhere, all up in this display case. I'm guilty. Like I'm with everybody, but from a collecting only standpoint, it's kind of like realizing with investing, if you can hold on to the sealed product, you're going to do a lot better. If you can get over that hurdle, which I'm not able to currently, if you can let those those PSA 10s go and sell all of your 10s and then buy a raw copy, buy a, a lesser graded copy, your collection would be so much bigger, right? And I'm not at a place where I can do that personally, but just something that I wanted to throw out to you guys, and I don't think it's talked about it as much. Uh, it might be kind of a hot take, but collecting graded cards is dumb, <laughs> right? But, you know, guilty. So next up, uh, I, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but my heart is vintage. I want to master set, like, base set, jungle, fossil, like, all the vintage sets, pretty much. I would love to. I, I love the e-reader cards. I love Team Rocket Returns. Like, that is where my my nostalgia, most of my nostalgia is. But you have to, looking at um, my collection which I've made videos out. If you guys want me to touch on it more, let me know. But most of what my collection up here is mostly modern. And the more, the more time spent in this hobby, the more I realize that modern is amazing. Modern is so much better than we ever had. Like vintage sucks <laughs> in a way. Like it's just the process of, it's just how things work. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I do think, and like, I would love to have sealed vintage boxes, but I don't, I don't because they're too expensive. Uh, maybe someday, but for now, it's just, uh, it's just something, something that I've, uh, kind of that I've come to, right? Also, uh, one of my favorite things that I, that I really enjoy is grading and selling cards. It feels really good to say, I bought this card for, you know, X you know, 10, 20 bucks, whatever, even 50. And I sold it for 150, 200, you know, whatever. Right. So like one of the highest cards I've ever sold was for 800 personally, but there it's, uh, it's just something that's fun. I really enjoy it. So that for me, grading is a big thing. I, I finally got to, I feel like I have a decent eye for grading just be prepared. If you want to get into grading also, I would advise don't pay people to uh to grade your cards for you to like send them in and review them the best thing that you can do for yourself is you're gonna have a few bad orders right but you get some decent lights like i got some decent lights in here you get in a dark room okay and you're gonna look at these cards and look at them maybe when you start like three times watch some videos on it it's not that hard but you do learn a lot after you get you know your first few subs <laughs> i had a few rough ones to start but lately, uh, a lot of mine have been in the uh, 80, 70, 70 to 80% gem rate. And one of my last ones, anyways, PSA damage card, they're taking care of that. But anyways, like things like that happen. Anyways, um, I'm getting a little bit off here. But I just wanted to kind of share share with you guys just a little bit of my passion. Because um, the grading thing has been, been a... a a bigger interest than I had thought it would. So sealed, sealed for long-term, grading for short-term. 
it's it's been really fun i really enjoy it so that's kind of pretty much going to come to the end of this video i just kind of wanted to talk about collecting and investing and how i do think that they work hand in hand and it can be it can be uh they they can help your investments can help grow your collection and then you might realize that you can part with part of your collection to collect more depending on on what you have going on and where you're at in your life so that is all i have for this one guys i do want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching and commenting uh, i get a lot of really great comments from you guys and i really do appreciate it it really means a lot to me so if you made it this far in the video though and you're not already subscribed clearly you like the video you watch it this long so go down there and hit the subscribe button hit the like button and then like I said, leave me a comment. Let me know what you collect, why you collect, and, you know, everything that you've been enjoying. So I just kind of wanted to get on here and just rant a little bit about cards because it's it's one of my biggest passions right now. So, And I don't see that stopping for a very long time because it is fun. I do, uh, I do also dabble in sports cards, and I know that most of you guys are into Pokemon. I like them both. And anyways, collect what you want. Invest in what you want. Don't let people bully you. Okay? I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.